Leanne Maskell, ADHD and A through Z, figuring it out step by step. Feeling like an outsider is agonizing, but finally understanding why can be liberating. The author once felt lost and crazy, grappling with symptoms no one explained. Though intelligent, she couldn't concentrate in school, relying on last-minute cramming for good grades. Her moods careened wildly and emotions overwhelmed her, leaving her questioning her sanity. Over time, these struggles crescendoed. Despite graduating law school, the author drifted, beset by restlessness and impulsivity. Relationships and jobs detonated quickly. Reckless drinking led to ruinous choices. Doctors dismissed her pleas for help, leaving her despondent. Ultimately diagnosed with Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, also known as ADHD, in her 30s, the revelation brought tremendous relief. Her symptoms weren't personal flaws, but reflections of differences in her brain wiring. Still, reconciling these ingrained challenges took time. In the darkness preceding her diagnosis, the author yearned for a guide. Now recovered, she pays that gift forward. She wants you to know you are not alone or crazy. Your brain just operates uniquely. Now, this blank will help you understand your ADHD powers and limits so you can catalyze your own metamorphosis. Healing begins by recognizing your mind works differently, yes, but also miraculously. Once you illuminate your brain's magic alongside its boundaries, you can transform your life. Clarify your ADHD profile. ADHD is more common than you might think. About 4% of adults worldwide live with this neurodevelopmental condition characterized by difficulties with concentration, impulsivity, hyperactivity, and managing emotions. Contrary to popular belief, not all people with ADHD present as hyperactive children bouncing off the walls. Symptoms vary widely. Some people with ADHD, like those with predominantly hyperactive subtype, do have difficulty staying still. Their symptoms may include excessive talking, frequent switching between tasks, and impulsive behavior. Others with the predominantly inattentive subtype lack the hyperactivity. Instead, their symptoms look more like zoning out, mind wandering, and struggling to complete tasks. Still others have the combined subtype, which includes both hyperactive and inattentive symptoms. While less visibly hyper, inattentive ADHDers may still have a lot of mental activity and energy beneath the surface. Women in particular often show this subtype, outwardly calm but inwardly chaotic, and are often left undiagnosed as a result. Regardless of manifestations, ADHD stems from differences in brain wiring, particularly underactivity in the prefrontal cortex governing decision-making, focus, concentration, and emotional control. This explains why those with ADHD often struggle with impulse control, boring tasks, and managing emotions. The good news is ADHD brings strengths too like creativity, resilience, calmness in crises, and compassion. By identifying personal motivations and tailoring environments to support their needs, those with ADHD can tap into their talents. If you have ADHD, it's important to understand your specific profile of strengths and struggles. Gaining clarity on how symptoms uniquely affect you is crucial, as is noting times ADHD may have impacted your life. Make a list of activities you enjoy and those you dislike. What themes emerge? For example, do you thrive when being creative but struggle with administrative tasks? Do you enjoy working in groups but struggle to work alone? Additionally, ask friends and family to identify strengths they notice in you. You may be taking some of these for granted and their outside perspective will provide insight into your abilities. Combining self-reflection on challenges and strengths with loved ones' insights will help give you the fullest possible picture of your specific ADHD profile. This clarity can help guide you going forward. 
Getting very clear on how ADHD impacts you as a specific individual is step one for thriving with your own unique wiring. Getting ahead of money struggles. Have you ever felt like your finances seem to spiral out of control no matter how hard you try to budget? Do you find yourself making impulsive purchases only to later wonder why you spent the money? Managing money is notoriously tricky for those with ADHD. The costs add up in many ways. Medication, fees, tickets, inattention, impulsivity, and difficulty planning for the future can create financial turmoil if unchecked. Studies clearly link ADHD to financial challenges. Individuals with more severe childhood ADHD symptoms are more likely to struggle with debt, have less in savings, and delay necessities as adults. They also exhibit riskier financial behaviors like taking out payday loans or overspending on credit cards. It starts innocently enough, using a credit card out of convenience or taking advantage of buy-now-pay-later deals. It's easy to gloss over the longer-term realities like interest, hidden fees, and penalties. Before you know it, minimum payments turn into compounding balances that never seem to drop. Avoid the debt trap at all costs. If you carry balances, commit to paying more than the minimum when possible. Cut up cards with available credit that tempt overspending. Automatically deduct payments from checking before due dates. The lure of a free trial for the latest streaming service or meal kit delivery may be hard to resist. But before you know it, your credit card statement is littered with $9.99 charges from companies you barely remember signing up for. Calendar alerts and phone notifications can help prompt you to cancel these before auto payments kick in. Be ruthless with yourself about which services you'll actually use month after month and set aside dedicated time each month to purge unwanted subscriptions. Limit exposure to tempting shopping opportunities, such as those which offer free shipping. Whether it's one-click checkouts on Amazon or Rideshare, frictionless spending is an ADHD kryptonite. It can help to remove payment information from sites and apps that facilitate impulse purchases. However, you can also use mobile banking technology to your advantage. Features like transaction notifications provide ongoing visibility into your spending. Locked savings accounts create friction between money and spending it. If necessary, institute barriers between you and your money by keeping the bulk of funds in hard-to-access savings accounts with auto transfers set up for bills. You remove day-to-day -day temptation to overspend. Allow yourself a modest allowance in a designated spending account every month. The more friction in accessing excess cash, the better. At the end of the day, ADHD-friendly financial practices require conscious effort. The good news is that proactive planning can help mitigate the money problems associated with ADHD. You can curb impulse spending, avoid debt traps, and ultimately take control of your financial situation. But before you spend money, you've got to make it. So next, Let's take a look at ADHD in the workplace. Finding Flow, Creating Your ADHD-Friendly Career Do you excel at brainstorming original ideas but then struggle to corral them into an organized plan? Do you find you need a deadline to really get going on a task? Despite all its associated challenges, studies confirm that ADHD minds can demonstrate exceptional creativity problem-solving skills, and passion when engaged in genuinely engaging tasks. Many famous and successful innovators, like Virgin Group founder Richard Branson, have leveraged these innate ADHD gifts to accomplish great things. Think about what qualities or aspects would make a good job environment for you. The key is finding an environment that unlocks your talents by playing to your innate nature. Do you perform best under pressure? Emergency response and crisis management careers provide constant adrenaline for quick-thinking minds. Do you thrive on variety and novel challenges? Consider the ever-changing landscape of a fast-paced startup. Does human interaction energize you? Perhaps a role in hospitality, sales, or counseling would be for you. 
Are you someone who tends to always be in motion and hates to sit still? Consider exploring active jobs like fitness coaching or adventure guiding that will give you the energy release you need. Surround yourself with colleagues aware of ADHD who appreciate your outside-the-box thinking style. Managers should be open to making reasonable accommodations to help you excel. Potential helpful accommodations include checklists for multi-step tasks, voice recorders to capture meeting notes, and noise-canceling headphones to use in a busy office. If self-employed, build structure by using daily routines to mimic office hours. Establish a sense of community and accountability for yourself by working with a coach or alongside others in a shared workspace. And don't be afraid to outsource tedious administrative tasks so you can channel your hyper-focus on what you're truly passionate about. Unwinding the Wired Mind Do you spend hours staring at the ceiling as thoughts race into the wee hours? Or perhaps you fall asleep easily? only to awaken repeatedly throughout the night. If so, you have ample company. According to one study, up to 75% of adults with ADHD have experienced insomnia. Our always-on, phone-addicted modern lives are decidedly ADHD-unfriendly. Racing thoughts and restlessness plague many ADHD adults at bedtime. Many adults with ADHD are intimately familiar with the exhaustion that comes from restless, fragmented sleep and the struggle to rally in the morning. Screens and social media stimulate our brains, making powering down a battle. Sleep fuels the very executive functioning and self-direction that enable planning, prioritizing, initiating projects, completing tasks, and monitoring progress. Without adequate rest, distraction and disorganization tend to intensify, fueling a vicious cycle. It becomes tempting to continually smash snooze before dragging yourself from bed to slog through the day in a fog of fatigue. Improving sleep hygiene can reap huge dividends for those with ADHD. It's about creating a calm, consistent evening routine that gradually transitions us into relaxation mode. How can you signal to your body that the stimulating chaos of daytime is winding down? Is it enjoying a warm cup of caffeine-free tea, writing a gratitude list in a journal, or doing a few gentle yoga poses in dim lighting? Think of it like a formal goodnight routine we may have had as kids, except now that we're older and wiser, we can thoughtfully craft those habits for ourselves. Try this out for a week and see how much better you feel. Optimize your sleep setup by making sure your bedroom feels like a cave-dark sanctuary. As you've surely heard by now, light from digital devices sends circadian-disrupting signals that tell our brains it's still daytime. Blackout curtains, an eye mask, or even wearing a slumber sleeping cap ensures your space mimics nighttime conditions so melatonin can be released. Your bed should be devoted solely to rest and intimacy. No scrolling, snacking, or watching Netflix while tucked under the covers. Consider moving your phone charging station outside your room so devices don't lure you into just checking one thing. Get yourself a plain old alarm clock to wake yourself up in the morning. The more your environment communicates sleep instead of stimulate, the easier drifting off will become. Now you can rest, renew yourself, and face the coming day. Thank you.